Equippers, welcome to Summer Equip. My name is Jiggs and I am your grade five, six pastor here at Center Seat Church. Equip is a place where you learn more about God and help you apply it in your daily walk with Jesus. This summer, grade five, six will venture into learning the lifelong habit of entangling truth from the themes of false teaching and tense conversations. You will also learn about character. What kind of character? Well, godly character, of course. And godly characters gets us ready for anything. And lastly, we will find the refreshing freedom that comes from revealing sin, repenting, and replacing our old habits with some godly habits. This week, we will entangle the truth around teaching or preaching. What is a popular idea that clashes with what Jesus teaches? I am super excited to find out. So join me as we jump right into our lesson for week two, Tangled Preaching. Enjoy and see you afterwards. Oh, hello. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm well. Thank you for asking. That's so kind of you to, to, to think about me and treat me kindly. How to treat others? Nice. I think that is a good topic for a life skill. Of skills! So, in your life, you are going to meet people. Now, what you have to remember is that everybody in the world is a little bit different and some not everybody likes the same things so here's what we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about how you are supposed to treat others what does that mean now put yourself in uh, another person's shoes and think to yourself if i was them how would i want to be treated the golden rule so the golden rule is basically something like do unto others as you would have them do un to you. So that means that you need to treat them like you would want to be treated. All right, so there's kind of some points that you might want to remember. One is that on how to treat others, you want to be honest. So you want to be honest, but you want to be life-giving when you're honest. So you want to be like, hey, you know that thing that you said that one time? That kind of hurt my feelings. Can we talk about that? And they'll be like, oh no, I had no idea that hurt your feelings. I'm so glad that you're being honest with me and talking about it. Integrity. Now, what is integrity? Well, it's actually a very important thing. Integrity is doing what's right when no one else is looking. That's integrity. Doing what you say and saying what you do. In conclusion, how to treat others is an important life skill. What you want to make sure to do is treat people right, be fair, be honest with them, help them out, and be a good person. We learned something new today. We learned something new. We learned something new today. We learned how to treat others.
Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are good. the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song you are good
Holy man. How do we get into this mess? Uh, hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Ellie. And we have been talking about the truth and how sometimes it can be hard to find. Especially in movies or advertisements or song lyrics when things sound like truth, but they really aren't. Yeah, you know when you've heard a song lyric and you think you hear one thing that actually ends up being something else completely different? Yeah, you know like in Lion King where it says, forget about your worries and your strife? It's not worries and stripes. What, what song lyrics have you misheard? A sweet, dr sweet dreams are made of these. Right. But I heard it as sweet dreams are tangerines because sweet tangerines, it makes sense. I mean, sense. I can see how you got there. Hold me closer, closer, tiny dancer. But I heard, hold me closer, Tony Danza. No, I heard I that. I don't even know who Tony Danza is. There are a lot of messages that get the truth all tangled up. Uh, like I have my truth and you have your truth, and they are like uh, equal and stuff. There's the rules of my universe, and there's the rules of her universe. Oh yeah, I've got my universe, and it's mostly outdoors. Follow your heart, follow your arrow, follow your compass, follow the yellow brick road, follow for follow, follow me on Insta. I think it's really important that you just respect someone's journey. I'm true to myself, because someone once told me T-Rexes are scary, so I guess that's what I'm gonna live by, so I'm scary. I'm a fish. Well, that's what everybody says I am. Not anymore. I will no longer go with the flow. Only dead fish go with the flow. Uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of my own original thoughts. I just, whatever other people are saying, that's what I, that's what I determine is true. My motto is, I'll get over it. Just let me be dramatic first. What I've always done, I follow my nose wherever it goes. You do you, cause I mean, you, right? E-W-E, you? Sometimes there are people who won't like your truth. When that happens, you just give them a mean face. I actually like to say follow your arrow because really, if you think about it, like whenever you're following things, like you use like a compass and like compasses have arrows. Follow others, follow me, follow you. Follow la 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 la. If you were to come up to me and tell me that this guy had turned purple, uh, I would believe it, I wouldn't even go outside. My life motto is practice makes perfect. I play the flute uh, by burping into it, but it's perfect for me, okay? I can believe that two plus two is four. If you say two plus two is five, and that if that works for you, then go for it. I would say my life motto is just be yourself. I mean, because, like, have you met me? Um, so I know that, you know, you think of me as a dinosaur? Uh, you don't think chill vibes, but I'm all about the vibes. You do good, you be good, you like send good out into the universe or whatever, and then like you get good back. Somebody, anybody can get online and tell me the milk doesn't come from cows, and I believe them. I believe them 100%. Follow the leader, follow the trail, follow your dreams. Follow the river into the sea, follow the wind, follow the trend, or, or don't, I don't care. We live in a very relativistic culture. What does the idea of relativism mean? Relativism is the belief that everything is relative. In other words, there's no absolute truth. You'll hear this all the time in culture today. Well, that may be true to you, but that's not true to me. That's your truth, but I have a different truth. You live your truth, I'll live my truth. There's no such thing as absolute truth, so I'm just gonna do whatever makes me happy. Here's the fundamental problem. Without a belief in absolute truth, then truth is defined by whatever makes me happy. And when the bottom line is my happiness, then happiness becomes the standards by which I judge my actions. If it makes me happy, it must be good. If it doesn't make me happy, it must be bad. Everyone says this is wrong, but it feels so right. What is the root cause of this problem? For so many of us, it, the problem is that we think that happiness and holiness are at odds. Deep down, somehow, because of our distorted view of what Christ represents and teaches, we tend to think you have to choose one or the other. What do we need to understand? This is so important. Holiness 
isn't mutually exclusive of happiness. In fact, they are very, very related. Holiness, in fact, is the pathway to true happiness and joy. Let me say it again. They're not mutually exclusive. They are united. They are connected, serving God, living for Him, not for the lower things of this world, but for the higher things that are eternal. That is the pathway to true meaning in life. It seems like when I know the truth, it's easier to make the right decisions. And to put that into practice, we are going to be doing the Recipes Gone Wrong Challenge. We've each got three slime recipes in front of us. One is the right recipe, two are fakes. Find the right recipe and you'll make good slime. Choose the wrong recipe and we'll see what happens. Mm, okay. Okay, well, let's take a look. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Okay, I've got some interesting choices here. Okay, I'm gonna choose this one. And I'm gonna go with this one. Oh. What do we have here? Interesting, this is the first time we've ever worn gloves on the Luke show. Wow. You should just get real messy. <gasps> glitter glue. I love nice. glitter glue. Looks like I'm supposed to pour this entire thing of glitter glue in this bowl. Oh wow, all of it? I mean, it says pour a glitter glue. So this is a glitter glue. And my first instruction says, uh, add body wash to a bowl. I'm adding half a tablespoon of baking soda Whoa. to the glue. I'm gonna measure watery? it out. I feel like a scientist. Mix with a spoon until your slime begins to form and gets firm. Okay. I think I wanna use my hands. I need to mix my hands. Perfect. Ooh. Until I get slimy. I should've texture. done the food coloring before this. You know what, my slime's gonna be blue, Ricky. Oh, good. It's just gonna be blue. <laughs> this is like paste. It's not slime, it's oh, yeah. paste. Mine's very sticky. I think sticky. slime's supposed to hold together a little bit more. Yes. Like this. I think it is, I think you're right. Look at this. It's like paint. Oh. Well, while we figure this thing out, check this out. Not this, but that. The thing you're about to see. How can we make sure that we're not tossed and blown about by tangled teachings? Because that's exactly what these kind of teachings do. They start to take our identity with who Jesus is and they start to come together in not a good way. In fact, any time that we start looking to who we think we are and how we feel to be the truth, we actually stop following Jesus and we're just following ourselves. When in fact, we have been called to reflect Jesus, to act like he acted. And when we do, that means sometimes we're gonna look different. We're not always gonna do what looks popular to this world, but it also means that we have what this world doesn't have. And that's a close relationship with a God who loves us and cares about us and has gone through great lengths to have a relationship with you. So don't be fooled. Don't fall for the lie that you can pick and choose your truth based on your reality. It's a trick. And Paul in Ephesians says that if you fall for that trick, you're basically as immature as a toddler. Tossed and blown about by every wind of some new teaching We will not be influenced People try to trick us Lies so clever they sound like the truth We will speak the truth in love
speak the truth in love Growing in every way More and more like Christ each day We will We will speak the truth in love like children We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of some new teaching We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth Let me kill me We will speak the truth in love Speak the truth in love Growing in every way More and more like Christ each day We will We will speak the truth in love Okay, see, I don't feel like I have enough slime so I'm gonna add more Okay. Of my shampoo just to get enough. All right. And then add a little bit more cornstarch. Here we go. And a little bit more food coloring. I'm gonna add some blue to it. I'm gonna add a few drops of purple to mine. Ooh, it looks like a galaxy. Isn't this slime supposed to hold more together? Yes. Okay. Maybe I need more cornstarch. I, I mean, it's, it is, it's, it's slimy. It's slimy. It's, but it's just super <laughs> drippy. It's not solid at all. Not doing it. This is supposed to be fun. Like, oh, look at how fun this slime thing is. And it's just, yeah. it's just a mess. My final attempt is I'm just gonna add everything. Let's see. Yeah, oh, it's definitely not right. It, it didn't, no, it didn't work. It didn't do anything. Well. It's just, it's just a bigger mess. Yeah, for sure. It's a. I have it's a, a chunk of baking soda right here. This looks like a mermaid blew its nose. That is In what my it looks hands. like. Pop quiz, old timers. Traveling at a steady, reasonable. Hey. Do not attempt to adjust your television sets. This one, we're going old school. Okay, let's play a little game. I'm gonna say a phrase, and then you tell me if it's something that Jesus actually said or not. Okay, ready? Here we go. Follow your dreams, and you shall be rewarded. Nah, I made that up. That's nonsense. Okay, here's another one. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Probably something you've heard your parents say. Were they quoting Jesus, or is that just... Yeah, that's Jesus. He said that. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. How about this one? Watch me nail this sick backflip. Is that Jesus? I, I mean, I could hear him saying that, but he didn't say that, at least as far as we know. How about this one? Doubting leads to danger. Is that something that Jesus said? No, he didn't say that. He never said that. Here's another one. The first will be last, and the last will be first. Is that something? I like that one. That's a Jesus one. Yes, the first will be last, and the last will be first. How about this one? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, that's Jesus, we know that one. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, that's a good one. Okay, one last one. Just be nice to each other. Was that something that Jesus said? Just be nice to each other? Actually, that's not something that he said. That's at least not that we know of. It's not one of his famous quotes. You know, some of these really good ideas, like just be nice to each other, they sound really good, but they crumble and they fall apart whenever you run them through the red letter test. Here's how this works. If you have a Bible, either a physical copy or a digital one, a lot of different versions have what Jesus said in red letter text. So it makes it really easy for you to dig in, see exactly what he said, what he taught, and apply it. So whenever the world gives you something that seems a little fishy or a little off, look at what Jesus had to say about it. Look at what he taught. Is it something that he taught? Okay. If not, it's probably bogus. Check the sources, stay watchful, but don't wear yourself out second-guessing every little thing. The Holy Spirit will help guide you. Imagine how easy it will be to recognize truth when you actually know the truth. 
I'm the quiz man. Goodbye. not right yeah my slime just looks sad i mean seriously like no matter how much i tried adding like i added the whole bottle and added all of the cornstarch and it just wasn't enough to make it the right recipe because it was wrong yeah i definitely had the wrong recipe too did not turn out the way i thought it would if you get tangled up in the wrong teaching it can make a big mess be careful not to get tossed or blown around by something that sounds clever but is actually a lie follow god's truth that's the right recipe until next time Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. Oh, see it. Oh dear. So one of the best ways to know what Jesus taught is to read what he said. It can be hard to remember in all the opinions around us that something being popular doesn't mean that it's true. So I have a challenge for you. This week, take some time to read a chapter out of one of the four gospels. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, and read what Jesus taught. Does it sound like what people are saying in the world around you? And then pray, talk it over with another believer. Practice applying that truth to your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that we know where to go to look for truth, that we have your word, that we have your Holy Spirit to help us to know the difference between popular and true. God, help us to find the next steps to take to always find the truth. In your name, amen. So remember, you have so many tools at your disposal. You have the Word of God. You have other believers around you. You have the Holy Spirit. You can figure out the difference between what's true and what's popular. And remember, we are always praying for you.
The most powerful teaching that Jesus taught us is about love, acceptance, compassion, forgiveness, faith, and hope. He also taught us about that miracles are possible. And these powerful messages were all intertwined throughout his most important message. One message that would rule them all. And it is in the book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and verse 37 to 39. It says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. It is through loving the Lord your God with your entire being that you can even consider the second commandment. Second commandment is you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And when we truly love and know God, we begin to love what He loves and He loves people. And when we love someone else, we begin to love what they love and desire what they desire. We begin to have shared passions. One of our shared passions with God, passion with God is a love for our neighbor. We can love other people with this same love because he have experienced it firsthand. Jesus' life and death was the perfect example of this self-denying love and we are called to do the same. So my challenge for you, Equippers, may you continue to grow in love for God and may, the, and may you continue to grow your love for God and may the Holy Spirit empower you to truly love your neighbor as yourself. So that concludes our time together. See you all again next week as we continue our adventure here at the Quip. Love you all. Bye.